My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 50. And we are on page number 255. Lesson number 50, day, day 3050. 3 is to represent the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 50, on page 255, 2.8.5. 2.8.5, the problem that appears there, the parabola that is given to us there in the book, is what we labeled as part A. And then we, then we decided to do three more extra problems. This problem that you see on the blackboard is not in the book and we label them as A, B, C and yesterday we did part C, the day before yesterday we did part B and so forth and today we're going to do the last one of the four in the series of four to part D. Here's what the problem says. Again it, de it deals with the parabola obviously. It says for the parabola that is given above, for the parabola given above which is y is equal to x squared plus 18x minus 115, find its x-intercept y-intercept, coordinates of its vertex, and the line of symmetry. Now, if you have watched part A, B, and C, you know by now what to do. What I would like you to do is pause the video, do the problem yourself, and once you have done so, then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a second. I think you will get more out of it that way. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to do precisely that, that is, to pause the video and unpause it. Okay, I'll give you five minutes to pause and unpause the video. Here we go, five seconds rather. Alright, let's see what we can do. In order to find the x-intercept, we have to factorize it. We have to factorize the given parabola, the equation of the given parabola that is, x squared plus 18x minus 115. We're looking for two numbers right here. We're looking for two numbers. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 115. And we're looking for two numbers, same two numbers obviously, whose sum has to equal positive 18. That's the trick. Can you think of two numbers? Can you think of two numbers such that when we multiply them, we get the result of negative 115, negative 115, and when we add those two numbers, we get the sum, their sum happens to be positive 18. How are we going to find those two numbers, those two magic numbers? Let's find out, shall we? So we are looking at 115 here, 115. Let's factorize it. Let's find the factors. Here we don't have to worry about it because this guy has a coefficient of 1, which makes our life much easier. Otherwise, we would have had much more complicated scenario, which we're not going to deal with in a GRE very often, unless, it's, unless it appears at a hard problem. This is a medium problem x squared minus 18x minus 115. 115 is what we're dealing with. Let's find the factors of it. Obviously, we can't divide by 2 because it's an odd number. Let's try dividing it by 3, shall we? How do we know, how do we, how do we know if a number is divisible by 3? And a given number is divisible by 3 if the sum, S-U-M sum, of its digits is divisible by 3. If the sum of the digits of a given number is not divisible by 3, then the number itself is also not going to be divisible by 3. Here we can see 5 plus 1 plus 1, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 is not divisible by 3. 115 is not divisible by 3. So we can't try 3. There is no point in dividing by 4 because if, if it's not divisible by 2, it's not going to be divisible by 4, obviously. Let's try 5, shall we? Of course it's divisible by 5 because it ends in a 5 or a 0. Let's divide by 5. How many 5 does 1 have? 1 has no 5s. 1 has no 5s. That one goes and joins this one and becomes 11. How many 5 does 11 have? 11 has 2 5s. 2 5s are 10. 2 5s are 10. After we take away 10 from the 11, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to the remainder of 1? That remainder of 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 15. And 15 we know has 3. 3 5s. There we go. We are done. We found the magic number. 115 just happens to be. 115 just happens to be. It's just a fluke. It just happens to be. Product of two prime numbers. And since this happens to be product of two prime numbers, 5 and 23, the story ends. Because prime number, by definition, you can't go anymore with it. You can't break it up. That's why it's called a prime number. So 
So it has to be it has to be 5 and 23. Question is how? Well, it's very simple. Positive 23 times a negative 5 is going to give us the negative 115 we're looking for, and a positive 23 plus plus a negative 5 is going to give us a positive 18. So let's do that, shall we? We're going to break it up. In other words, we're going to break up our 18 18x into either which doesn't really matter which one we put first 23x and a negative 5 or we could have done the other way around it still wouldn't work and then of course we have negative 115 we're going to pick up speed now this is our y from these two from the first two factors we have a common factor of x let's take it out we're left with x here and 23 here and here we're going to have a common factor of negative 5 if we take out negative 5 from the com from this third third term we are left with x and 5 times what number equal equal 125 uh, 115 we know 5 times 23 and a positive 23 why positive 23 because positive 23 and a negative 5 is going to give us a negative 115 there we go and now we have a common factor of x plus 23 from this quantity and that quantity let's take it out x plus 23 and here we are left with x and here we are left with negative 5. Where you go? All done. When the equation of a parabola is written in this form, when the equation of the parabola is written in this form, it gives us the x-intercept. How? Why does it give us the x-intercept? Because here we can clearly see, when it's written in this form, we can clearly see that when x is equal to negative 23, y if you put in x equal to negative 23 here, negative 23 and positive 23 will become 0. It doesn't matter what we have next here, 0 times anything is 0. When x is equal to negative 23, y is going to be 0. And when x is equal to positive 5, y is going to be 0 again. Because when x is equal to positive 5, positive 5 and a negative 5 will become 0. And 0 times anything is 0 again. So when, when, the, when the equation of the parabola is written in this form, it gives it the x-intercept. When the equation of the parabola is written in this form, it gives us the y-intercept, by visual inspection that is. When, it, when I say it gives us this and gives us that, what we mean is that by visual inspection, just by looking at it. We don't have to do anything. We didn't have to do, we didn't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo. We don't have to do it all. That's, that's a damn silly thing to do in the exam. We can just look at it. And this tells us that the x-intercepts are negative 23 and a positive 5. X-intercepts are negative 23 and a positive 5. So we answered the first question. The question was, what are the x-intercepts? The answer is negative 23 and a positive 5. Of course it has two intercepts. What's the y-intercept? Y-intercept is when the equation is written in this form, which is the form that was given to us to begin with, you can see it's negative 115. And how do we know that? Because y-intercept is where it cuts the y-axis, obviously, and at that point x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, when you put in x is equal to 0 here, x squared, 0 squared times 18, well, you, know, you know what I mean, right there. How do we go about finding out the coordinates of the vertex and the line of symmetry? Let's find out, shall we? So that's it, that part is done. Now we are going to work on the coordinates of the vertex. Now, actually let's plot this thing. Let's rewrite, let's rewrite this thing here. y is equal to positive 23, x plus 23, and y minus 5. Let's rewrite here. We're going to plot it to see what it looks like. Now, what we're about to do to find the coordinates of the vertex is a very long method. That's not what we're supposed to do. The question is, do we know how to manipulate the given equation of a parabola in its three form? Can you, can you rewrite a given equation of the parabola in a form that gives us the y-intercept? The answer is yes. When it's written in this form, it gives us a y-intercept. Can you rewrite this equation in a form that gives us x-intercept by visual inspection? The answer is yes. Just factorize the bloody thing and we get the x-intercept. The question is, can, do, you know, do we know how to manipulate this thing so that we can rewrite this equation in a form that clearly shows us, by visual inspection, the coordinates of the vertex? And if, you do the, if, you, if we knew that, we would simply do that. We would simply solve it algebraically. Right now we're not going to solve, we're not going to answer this question algebraically. The question is what are the, what are the coordinates of the vertex? Right now we're going to find the coordinates of the vertex in a little bit more laborious manner by drawing it out graphically. We're going to answer the question. And once we've done it graphically, 
then we're going to see how to do it algebraically. In other words, how do we manipulate this equation so that we can rewrite this equation in the form that shows us the coordinates of the vertex by visual inspection. Let's first do it graphically. So we have negative 23 and positive 5. So let's, let's say this is positive 5 here. And then this is 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. This, so negative 23 is going to be right here. Negative 23 and a positive 5. Positive 5 and a negative 23. So it goes through here and it goes through here. Now, listen very carefully. From negative 23, okay, from negative 23 to positive 5, as I said, listen very carefully. From negative 23 to positive 5 is a distance of 28, isn't it? Distance of 28. If you cut that into half, it's 14. It's 14. So you have to go 14 units. So let's go 14 mm -hmm. units, either this way or that way. You can go from here if you like. So this is 5. Up to here is going to be 5, then 10, and then 15. This is too far. We only want 14. So right here, mate. Right here. This is our line of symmetry. This would have been negative 10. So this is negative 9. X is equal to negative 9. The equation of the line of symmetry, we just found it. The line of symmetry is x is equal to negative 9. Voila. Now find out which is same as the x coordinate of the vertex. Which is same as the x coordinate of the vertex. So we know it goes through here, it goes through here, the vertex falls somewhere along here on this line of symmetry. So let's 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 plot it. And this, this point right here, the vertex, has the coordinates of negative 9, and let's find out the y coordinate, which is very straightforward. To find the y coordinates of the vertex, we simply plug in negative 9 into our equation, either that equation or this equation. Let's do it in here, it will be easier. So when x is equal to negative 9, negative 9 and a positive 23, negative 9 and a positive 5, negative 10 and a positive 23 would have been positive 14, so it's going to be positive 15. Positive 15, because we're taking, we're taking away 9, not 10. Had we taken away 10 from 23, we would, have left, we would have been left with 13. It should have been 14. Had we taken away 10 from 23, we would have been left with 13. Since we're taking only 9 away, we're left with 14. 14 times 15. 14 times 15. How much is 14 times 15? But don't, don't look at me. How the bloody hell do I know? 14 times 15. I know 10 times 15. Listen carefully. I know 10 times 15 is 150. I also know 4 times 50, 15 is 60. If 4 times 15, 4 15s are 60, and 10 15s are 150, then it stands to reason that 14 15 must be 150 plus 60. 150 plus 60 is negative 200. Uh, 115, 150 plus 60 is negative 210. So we have a problem, because that is not what I see in my notes here. So where did I make a mistake? I don't want to redo the video, I want to find the mistake. See, this is what happens when we, when we try to do it this way here. Algebraically, it's more efficient, it's more elegant, it's more beautiful, it's, uh, it's classy. It's, uh, you just do it algebraically, which we'll do it in a second. So let's see, where did we go wrong here? Negative 23 and a positive 5, that's 28. 28, half of 28 is 18. We, oh, we should have gone 18. From here to here is 5, 10, from here to here is 5, then 10, then 15, oh. 23 plus 5 is 28, it is 14, it is 14. 5, 10, 14 up to here, and that's negative 10, so it should be negative 9. And when you put in negative 9 here, did I make a mistake here? When you put in negative 9 here, negative 9 and a positive 23 is positive 14. And that's negative 9 and negative 5 is also 14. That's where I made a mistake. Negative 9 and negative 5 is also 14. So it's a perfect square, 14 square, which we know is 196. 14 square is 196. And I say it casually because I take it for granted that you know your squares. You should know your squares 1 through 20. 
And 14 squared is 196. That's where I made a mistake. Negative 9 and negative 4 is not negative 15. Because as I approached here, as I, as I reached here, it did not match what I have in my notes here. So the vertex is negative 196. Negative 196. Which is just as well, which is just as well, because now we'll do it algebraically and we'll see that we don't have to go through this mumbo jumbo. How do we, how, do, let's erase all of this thing. And now the question is, if the equation of the parabola is written, is given in this form, is given in this form, how do we rewrite this thing in a form that clearly shows the coordinates of its vertex? And the answer to that question is that we have to do what is known as completing the square. The process is known as completing. Look, if, if it's misspelled, don't, don't make a fuss about it, okay? Complete. Com completing the squares. If the words are misspelled, don't worry about it. This is how we go about it. So we have y squared, y is equal to x squared plus 18x, which we can write that as 2 times x times 2 times x times what? 2 times x times what is going to give us 18x? The answer, of course, is 9, because 2 times 9 is 18. So now we have our 18x. You see, x squared plus 18x, and now we put down the 9 squared here. And that is a, that is a complete square. That's a perfect square. That can be written as x plus 9 whole square. You see that? That's our x coordinate of the vertex, negative 9, right here. Negative 9. Now, let's see what else we can do here. You see, the original quantity that was given to us was negative 115, not positive 81. When we introduce the 9 squared, we just said we just introduced positive 81. It's positive 81 appears nowhere in the given parabola. The first thing we have to do is write down what is given to us, which is negative 115. And then, and then we have to undo, we have to undo what we shouldn't have done. What we shouldn't have done is we, we simply cannot arbitrarily introduce 81 out of the blue. We introduced it so that we can have a complete square here. You see this is a complete square because this is written in the form of our a, x is a, it's written as a squared plus 2 times a, which is our x times b, which is our 9, plus b squared. This, this, this marker is dying. This marker has no life left in it. There you go, you see? a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, our a is x and b is 9. And it can be written as a plus b whole squared. This quantity can be written as a plus b whole squared. a, which is our x, plus b whole squared, which is what we have. That's why we introduced a 9 squared. But we have to undo it. We can't just leave it like that. What we introduced it, what we did it, we have to undo it by subtracting the 9 squared. The positive 9 squared and the negative 9 squared are going to kill each other. And it goes away. And we are left with the parabola that was given to us. This, this, this equation, the parabola, is the exact same equation as that equation. Why? Because it's x squared plus 2 times x times 9, which is the same as 18x, plus plus 9 squared and a negative 9 squared, they kill each other, and we're left with negative 115, which is what we have. The question is, how much is this quantity? Negative 115 and negative 9 squared. What do you think? Hmm, I wonder. The suspense is killing me. 115, 115 and 9 squared, which is 81. What do you suppose we're going to get? 5 plus 1 is 6, 1 plus 8 is 9. Aha! This is negative, this is negative, negative 196. What do you know? What do you know? So this quantity right here, negative 196, when the equation is written in this form, it gives us the coordinates of the vertex. One more time, we're going to rewrite the equation of the parabola in all three forms now, so that we can see it. A given parabola can be written as, which is a standard form, usually it is given like this, x squared plus 18x. I shouldn't say standard form because there is no such thing, I misspoke it. When it's written like, when it's written as in this form, when it's written in this form, it gives us the y-intercept, because when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 115, we can see that. This is the y-intercept form. 
when it's written, when we factorize it and we arrived at, I, I don't, I erased it, I don't have it anymore. When we, when we factorize it, we got x plus 23 times x minus 5. So when we factorize this equation and finally write it in this form, this, is the, this gives us the x-intercept. x-intercepts, plural, intercepts. You can see from here that when x is equal to negative 23, y is going to be 0. And when x is equal to positive 5, y is going to be 0. This is the x-intercept form. This is the y-intercept form x-intercept form, when it's written in this form, this way, it gives us the y-intercept, and when we complete the square and we write it in this form, it gives us the coordinates of the vertex. If it's written in this form, we can see the coordinates of the vertex will be negative 9 and a pos uh, and negative 196. Negative 9 and a negative 196. And we did it this way, graphically, the long way, because we didn't know how to go from here to here. Of course we did it. Of course we did know it because we had done it three times already. This is part D. We, had, we did it in part A, B and C. I hope you watched those videos and if you haven't, watch them now. Don't skip around. Don't go around all over. Watch them in proper sequence so that you can get the most out of it. Uh, last thing before I end the video. If you're interested in working with me, if you would like to hire my services, if you would like to employ my services to help you prepare for the exam, uh, I'll be more than happy to do so. You can reach me at 1-800-808-PREP or here's my email address prepsat at aol.com Why prep SAT? Because years ago, many many moons ago in 1989 when I started this business I was doing just the SAT and later on of course I branched out into GRE and GMAT and SAT and SAT and HESI and T's and all sorts of things but the email address just stuck stuck with me prepsat at aol.com okay. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Right. Bye now.